um, let's start this. Let's start this. Let's try because uh, we're we're trying to break. We're trying to break the ice here, and it's hard for yes. for me. Woo! Okay, so I am in Brasilia, Brazil. It's rainy. Where are you now? I am in the far east end of Tennessee, and I can see mountains from the back deck, and it is sunshiny today. Wow, lovely. <laughs> Phenomenal. <laughs> let's see, let's start with you playing something to see if we can get this going. Is that okay? Let's, let's try that. How about a little Bach? Phenomenal. Let's see what happens. So, uh, see, stop me if you've heard this one before. There's no limit to what Bach and a little cello can accomplish. <laughs> I know, this is phenomenal. Actually, this is a good point for us to start some sort of discussion here. Oh, for, for wonderful. Okay, you and I are, you know, you just, what you, what you just did, and I see many people here, people from all around the world. I see there's people from Canada, mm -hmm. people from Belgium, people from Berlin, a, a bunch of people from Brazil here too. Uh -huh. And... What I what I can tell, and you're a philosopher. I I you know I'm a cheap I'm a cheap philosopher. You're you're a, like you're the real thing. You and I though believe pretty much in the same thing. Mm -hmm. You and I believe that people have a way of coming together if we think of what of what uh, brings us together instead of focusing on what separates us. Correct. Absolutely, yes. It is amazing. I mean, I see your work on Facebook. I see how you try desperately to make people, <laughs> like, stop. Stop this craziness, you know? And um, yeah. we, both of us live in countries which are deeply divided. Mm -hmm. And both of us...
of us believe in the power of art and music to connect people. Yes, absolutely. And um, I, th I don't know. I think it's a... Let's talk a little bit about how we met so that people who don't know who we are... Uh, so so we, we talk about bubbles. So there's people from your bubble and people from my bubble here in this in the, in the world. Of here. course. How did we meet? Well, it depends on where we want to start the story, but I will say that uh, I grew up actually in the in the Northlands of the United States. I I am a Minnesota kid, uh -huh. and the latest I have ever seen it snow was May thirty first. <laughs> <laughs> That's accumulating snow, right? That's when it actually piles up on the ground. Right. But I have also lived in a lot of other places. And before I came to Missouri, where we, our paths crossed, right. I had spent 10 years living in the Boston area, oh. playing for a living and, and doing those sorts of things. Ended up coming back to the center of Missouri to take care of my grandmother at the end of her life and sort of fell into a delayed master's program. So I turned up in Columbia with, uh, I think it was 11 years after I graduated from undergrad uh -huh. and turned up in June and somehow there were spots open and I started a, a graduate program that next fall. Mm -hmm. And that's when we met and started making music together. That's correct. And I was lucky enough to meet you at a, at a point where I was, I was forming an orchestra, a crazy orchestra that we had in Columbia, Nineswio, <laughs> Nine Street Philharmonic Orchestra. And you were my, my principal cellist, and you were just, I mean, the best thing since sliced bread. I was Oh, we had some glorious times, didn't we? It was fun. <laughs> it was really fun. We we all doing repertoire that we should not be doing. Alas. Oh, cool. It was a lot of fun. That was the whole point. I mean, there were, you know, it was like we had uh, our audience enjoyed doing it. We enjoyed doing yeah. it, and it was a it was of, magnificent. I know it was a <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And um, so you since since Colombia, you move you moved out, and you you're now in Tennessee. What are you doing there? Well, it goes something like this. I. Um finished my schooling in Colombia. And, you, and then, you finished your, your master's in cello. Yes, cello performance was the degree, although I used it as cover for a lot of other classes. I was taking <laughs> statistics and behavioral biology and lots of terrible things. Just like me, I, gra yeah. I finished my undergrad with 400 credits. Yes, yeah, see, that's the right way to do it, in my opinion. But, I, and then I was, I was playing various nearby places and including places such as Sioux Falls, uh, South Dakota, mm -hmm. which is a six and a half hour drive. Sure. And, and then I started to get work down in Springfield, Missouri. So I moved there uh -huh. and I became the principal cellist of the Springfield Symphony. Which is and, a great orchestra. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Got to do some, some fun stuff there. Yeah. Uh, However, something else happened in Springfield. Well, many things happened in Springfield. One of them was that I also started working as a luthier. So oh, I really? had a chance to take apart instruments and put it back together and oh. broaden my skill set there. So I had more, more things to play with. But another one was that I, I met my wife there. Oh. And, and so my wife is um, from India, actually. There you go. And... Uh, she is a chemical engineer, and she's working from home upstairs right now in another meeting. And uh, we met in a ballroom dance class. Oh, that's phenomenal. And so then, uh, uh, actually, a few short months later, we got married. And we enjoyed it so much that then when we had a chance to visit India, just over a year ago, we got married again in India. So oh, my we, God, that's awesome. So I, 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 there are pictures in various places, but not really accessible. However, the next thing that happened was um, her job moved to Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, well, shoot, I should probably go along. <laughs> and, and I did. Yeah, yeah. And, and so what has happened since is that we have, we have bought a house and I have been renovating it from the inside. So one of my next duties is to finish plumbing the downstairs uh, basement areas uh, but I've been laying floors and scraping ceilings and doing wonderful things. And I've been playing a bunch with the, um, uh, let's see, Greenville, South Carolina Symphony. Ooh, there we go. And, um, and here and there in other places. 
And actually, the Greenville Symphony has a principal cello opening. Uh, oh. And if as long as the, uh, the quarantine doesn't kill off the audition, just as it has the rest of the season, right. <laughs> then, then I will go down and audition for it and we'll see how I do. That's phenomenal. That's one thing that is very different in, in, in the U.S. and in Brazil. What, I, I, was, I was thinking, I'm, I'm going back, I'm trying to keep our audience interested. Look at, look at oh, this. Yeah. What happens here is you said that you were like, you're fixing the house. Yes. This is completely unthinkable for us. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, like in Brazil, aí, gente, o cara tá consertando a casa dele. Ele consertando. So you pick, you pick the, the painting, you pick everything, you do it. Uh huh. Alone. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's totally something that we, I mean, we, we would not do it. It's, it's a different way of living. It's very, it's very fun. Look, I, I have, we have a Rachel here, Raquel here with us. Raquel used to work with, with, with me here in Brazil, and now she lives in Canada. And oh, yeah. she lives in Prince Island, Prince something Island, you know, on the Atlantic. Prince Edward. Uh, Prince Edward, uh -huh. yes. So there yes. she is. And now she's, exper now she's experiencing it. I mean, so she and her <laughs> husband are there, and they're like, oh, my God, I got to do everything. Yes, it's very Yeah, funny. yeah. Yes, there you go. But It's fun. So I've been doing things like laying hardwood floors and, you know. <laughs> and, I, and you're not, you're not, I mean, you're not a luthier. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sort of a jack of all trades oh. and I try to get better at as many of them as I can. So by now there are a lot of things I can do well. Um, certainly I've, I've also got uh, metalworking equipment at the basement. So I'm used to working to very fine tolerances. <laughs> and you know, to thou one thousandth of an inch there. Oh, and God. in luthier work, it's often even closer than that. So to lay a floor, it's just, okay, well, I'll just slack off on my precision a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm so, I'm so, you know, I'm so proud of our audience today because today is the most varied audience that we had since, since the beginning of this interview. What, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do here is kind of, just like what we're doing now, trying to reconnect with people that I met for, you know, for the past 50 years around the world. And it, but it's the first time that we have people from like different continents here with us at the same time. It's a lot of fun. Well, how wonderful. You clearly have, uh, have done something right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. In, in spite of my presence, you've still managed. <laughs> oh, please stop it. Now, <laughs> can we hear something else? Oh, of course. But before I do, let me show you something interesting. Sure. You, you may have noticed that my cello is sort of missing something. That's correct. I hadn't noticed, but now I am. Yeah, so what's going on here is that this side of the cello is normal, uh -huh. but on the other side, I have shortened the pegs. So that it won't bother your, bother your ears. Uh -huh. I, I learned of this trick and I thought, what a fantastic idea, because if you're a shorter person, which I am sort of unfortunately not, then your cello goes behind your head and everything is fine. Of course. But I'm over six feet tall, and that means the best place for the cello for me is kind of in here. Oh my God, look at that. And if, if you don't have shorter pegs, you play like this, and <laughs> over time it probably does neurological damage to of the nerves. Of course. So, so what I did was I took out my two pegs, because, you know, as you know, they're just tapered fits, right? Sure. And I went down to the shop, and I took out a piece of wood, and I put it in my metal lathe, and I tapered it down, and then I cut a slot in the end of it so I can turn it with a key that I can insert. <laughs> That's awesome. That's phenomenal. And then I did it again. So I, I have two half pegs there, and the originals are safely in my case. So I, I thought I would explain. That's what's going on here. So it's uh, See, we have we have in our audience Lilian Vasconcelos, who is an architect, and sees that she's enchanted by your your inventivity. <laughs> well, see, that's that's the fun of having stuff lying around that you can make things out of is that whatever is not working you can just go and make something else absolutely and in fact i you probably don't know this either but i have started making conductors batons 
I want one. <laughs> we we'll have to figure this out. I do not even have a website. I just haven't gotten that far yet. But I've I built my equipment. Care. I don't care. I need. I, I mean, can I, just to hold the baton that you made it, 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 it will bring me enormous power and might. Oh, absolutely, yes, and uh, and so we will we will see if we can arrange something. Perhaps I can send something. Uh, absolutely, we'll we'll down make it down to the south and... Yes. Yes. Well, how how about uh, how about a little more music? How about some uh, some Camille Sasson? He's a nice guy. Phenomenal. And for for people who don't know the kind of sense of humor I have, I should explain that about a week ago I recorded up and put on my Facebook page a version of the swan played in whole tones only. Which for us musicians is a lot of fun. I love it. And oh, yeah. That's exactly, I, I heard that. And I said, I want to interview this guy. <laughs> and, you know, the funniest thing about it is the musicians are saying things like, oh, my gosh, I thought my ears were breaking. <laughs> and the non musicians are saying, oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> And, and it's the juxtaposition that's so interesting. But this time, I'll, I'll try to play it straight. So uh, okay. I, will, I will do my best. Very Let's good. see. So, so uh, from, uh, by Camille Sanson, The Swan. Yes. <laughs> This is, this is such an amazing gift. And here we are back to lift the camera just a little bit so that we can see your eyes better. But this is great. This is such an amazing gift. And once again, thank you so much for, for being in this, you know, in the ranks of people who are trying to unite, trying to together. And I think that this is really phenomenal yes. that 
it's really phenomenal that, especially in this time, I mean, it's hard. I, 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 of course, it's something that we will all remember this time of, of our lives. I mean, it's a, it's a, thank God it's a once in a, a lifetime experience, I hope. And um, yeah, I think so. And I, I think that there are, how should I put this, signs of encouragement. Yeah, I think so too. More and more, you know, one, one of the, uh, oddly enough, one of the gifts of the pandemic is that it is forcing people out of the usual ways of thinking of things. Absolutely. And it is so easy to get stuck in the rut of just, just sort of reacting to what everyone else is doing wrong. Yeah. And when you start to realize that, oh my gosh, no one really knows what to do and we're all kind of trying to do the best we can, yeah. it opens cracks in some of the certainties that are there. Absolutely. And through those, you begin to see the wider picture. Yeah. And it, I think that too will grow virally as we come out of this. So we, I think we're in better shape than it looks like. I hope so too. I'm, you know, I hope so too. And uh, it's people... People like you really give us hope. And uh, I thank you immensely for existing and for sharing your gifts with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. And it's, it's, it's fantastic to reconnect with such a good friend. We, we should do this more often. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Matt. Okay. And uh, thank you, our audience. So thank you. And our... our we now end our Brasilia, Brazil, and from, ten from Eastern Tennessee, is that correct? Eastern Tennessee, the other end. From Eastern, ten from Eastern Tennessee, I froze. And, uh, but can you hear me? I can. You've frozen, but I can hear you. I but, uh, yes. Oh, now you have heard. Oh, now you're back. See you. But I can't hear you.